there anything we can point to as the root cause of all of our potential illnesses? I'm a believer that inflammation is kind of the root of most of the things you know, we talk about with disease. What do you mean by inflammation? So inflammation is your body is making an immune response, an inflammatory protein. So you may skin your knee, and that's inflammation, and that's allowing you to heal. But if there's chronically inflammation in your body, we know bad things happen. If you continue to have inflammation, you're going to accelerate heart disease, things like Alzheimer and cancer at the root of inflammation. It, inflammation can cause cancer? Inflammation can cause cancer, no, no doubt about disease. it. Yeah. Well, but I mean, how do I know I have inflammation? The only thing I know is that when my feet get swollen, that's inflammation. Right, but that's one of the markers of inflammation. So wear good shoes. Why are you wearing shoes like that? <laughs> I'm sure they're very pretty, but they're promoting inflammation. Walking on sneakers every night creates much less pressure on the joints, and over the course of many years, that's less inflammation. That's a positive thing. Where it really came to light and really struck home to me is a study called the Jupiter Study that was done out of Harvard and together with a group in the United Kingdom. And they took people with a normal cholesterol, so 175 and below, and they put them on a statin, like Lipitor. And in this case, they used one called Crestor. And in these people with normal cholesterol, they delayed heart attack and stroke by almost 12 or 13 years. Seriously. And they decreased the incidence of cancer by 40%. Uh -huh. But usually people take statins for uh, high cholesterol, right? That was how, where they were developed. And they yeah. certainly do lower cholesterol, but it turns out their mechanism seems to be much more in the blocking of the inflammation side. Gotcha. So the biggest drug in the pharmaceutical industry, which works beautifully, we had the wrong mechanism for 20 years. Alas. This is one of his recommendations. There are four main ones that I just want to go over with you, David. Sure. And one of them is to take a statin. Yes. If you're over 40 or if you're any age. Well, it really depends on your family history and talking to your doctor. So there certainly are people who would benefit in their 20s starting a statin. Other people will start in their 40s. Uh -huh. But that's Why a discussion. Why would they start it at 20? Because they have a significant family history of early cardiovascular disease. And so, you know, people die of heart attacks in their 30s. And so there's data that if you start earlier, there's actually more of a benefit. And the power is, is that these are not expensive drugs. You can go to Walmart and get a 90-day supply for 10 bucks. Really? Without health insurance. Uh-huh. I mean, but it's not the brand name. Doesn't matter. Same thing. Uh-huh. Any downsides? Certainly, there are side effects to any of the medicines we'll talk about today. Statins can have some effects on liver and muscle, both of which are reversible, and both of which are very rare. How are they reversible? You stop the drug and they go away. And so it's a remarkable blocker of inflammation, as is another drug in your medicine cabinet called aspirin. Just so regular old aspirin. Regular old, 81 milligrams of a baby aspirin. Baby, has, not, not the big one. I mean, right, not just the normal a baby one. aspirin. 81 milligrams that you, you, know, you take one a day. Mm -hmm. and so this is number two. So one a day of baby aspirin will reduce your incidence of cancer by almost 20%. Really? And so again, if you're but looking why, at- how, how, why? Again, by we think blocking inflammation. And I say that we think because again, we're a complex system. It's probably doing many things, but it's shifting the system to non-cancer. You know, my central premise of the book that I believe is cancer is not a noun, it's a verb. You're cancering or you're heart diseasing. And when you think of it like that, your body's in a state of disease and you want to move it from that state to a health state. Aspirin helps you do that. I mean, are you really advocating that everyone take one baby aspirin a day? Again, it's something that you want to discuss with your physician. There are certain people who can't tolerate an aspirin, who Such have some side effects why? to it. Certain eye diseases where it can actually accelerate. If you have gastric ulcers or stomach ulcers, there are things where aspirin may not be good. For the mass majority, I think it is good and has a dramatic effect. But think of it from a public health perspective, right? If I can reduce cancer by 40%, heart disease by 20, 30% with Lipitor and statins, why would Medicare pay for your heart attack if you didn't take one of those? If we really want health reform in our country, and certainly we do when healthcare is 16% of gross domestic product, we have to get aggressive. We have to get aggressive with drugs like this and start to say, if you don't take these, you've got to pay a premium. Michael Dell at Dell Computer mm -hmm. charges you a different amount of health insurance if you smoke or you don't smoke. Really? There's a power to that. Uh-huh. Okay. Another one um, is, uh, believe it or not, folks, don't take multivitamins or supplements. I mean, that really you know, shocked me. I went into my husband's uh, medicine cabinet and threw away the vitamin D. 
Right? Because... Damn straight, yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you look at the studies on vitamins, and th there have been dozens over the last two decades, there has never been one to show a benefit with over 1,000 people. N and none all to show a benefit? None of them showed a benefit. And all the ones over 1,000 people have either a trend or a statistically significant increase in the rate of cancer. So there's a... No, hold on. Actually cause cancer? Causes were, but there's more cancer in the people who took them. So I don't know if it was a primary cause or a secondary. So for example, the government just spent $247 million in a study to say, hey, does vitamin E stop prostate cancer? And what do you know, there's about a 20% increase in the people who took vitamin E of prostate cancer. And that 20% increase lasted for three years after stopping vitamin E. So it lasts for a while. If a woman takes multivitamins, three or more a week, her risk of death is higher. I don't believe that. It can't be true. Journal of American Medical Association this past six months. Yeah. Seriously? Yeah. Well, then how come we keep seeing these headlines, you know? Uh, well, I don't know. We, we report them all the time. They're know? associations. They say, do this, do that. And we see these studies. What people forget is that an association doesn't mean something's causal. So you're right. And in the book, we have this great page where we go through about 50 headlines that had just come out with vitamin D. Vitamin D cure, you know, is the cause of cancer, heart disease, you name it. And so if you look in the United States now, over 90% of people are low in vitamin D. So first of all, it calls into question, what's normal? Uh, when women take high-dose vitamin D, they increase their rate of bone fracture by 21%. So increase their increase rate of bone, bone fracture, fracture by 21% with high dose vitamin D. In the nurses' study, you know why? giving calcium and vitamin D, yeah, How giving calcium and vitamin D, there was no effect on bone density or, or uh, uh, on fracture rate. And so, if you think about it, we've evolved a mechanism to block vitamin D absorption, which is tanning. Right? The only reason you tan is to block vitamin D absorption. But if you take a high dose of vitamin D in a pill, which is non-physiologic, and remember, we've evolved a mechanism not to do this, you downregulate the receptor and screw up signaling. I don't know, I understand what you mean by receptor. So the body has this homeostatic mechanism, which is a big word for saying yeah. we're a system. But when you take the, the, it's the vitamin D, it's its receptor, and it's a bunch of signaling Wait, molecules. Wait do that again. Vitamin D, its receptor, and a bunch of signaling molecules. There are eight known members of this pathway now, and there are probably more that we haven't discovered yet. So if one is low, the other is probably high. So whenever you take a big amount of vitamin D, you lower this one, oops, which uh -huh. affects signaling and screws up the bone. You've looked at all this data that, that exists, right? It's not as if you did a new study on X, Y, or Z. Right. Or, or although you some, in some cases you have. Some cases we have. But remember, my profession is the one in the 80s that said, take margarine, not butter. And how many millions of people did we kill by doing that? We're very good what at making happen? these declaratory statements. What did happen with margarine? You know, we look and we say, listen, this particular type of fat in butter is not good. People have big fat diets. So therefore, let's put something synthetic in and see if we can get around that. And it turns out we were wrong. Is... is um having regular butter better than maybe spark balance or something like that? Well, again, the, the newer generations of butter substitutes, not margarine, are healthy. So they're okay. olive oil based or they're actually, they're, 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 they're fat based that are good. Remember, I mean, one of the premises of the book is that a low fat diet is not good. You want to be on a good fat diet. What does olive, that mean? Olive oil, canola oil, heart healthy eggs. What do you know? If you feed a chicken good food, the oils in that yolk are good for you. Where if you force feed a corn, they're not. Let's do the fourth, because yes. there's statins, baby aspirin, no vitamins, thank you very much. Right. And the fourth is get a flu shot. Yeah. So, okay, why? So, if you got the flu, you're a healthy young woman, you would do great. You would survive it, you'd be in bed a couple of days, you'd stay home from work for a few days. But that inflammation, we call it cytokine storm in medicine, that will have its effect a decade from now. So a decade from now, your rate of heart disease and cancer will actually go up from all the inflammation associated with that flu. So young kids say, listen, I'm not going to you know, have a problem with the flu. I'll just, I only sick for a couple of days. But again, the marked inflammation with that flu, it's going to have its manifestation a decade or so down the road. So again, look at you society. The, resi the residual effect of that? The inflammation from today will uh -huh. have its effect you know, on your cells a decade from now. So and when they, they cancer say and heart disease incidents will go up in you. When they say uh, if you're 
uh, over 20 something, between 20 something and 60, you don't have to have it. I mean, I don't know who they is, but certainly our, our Center for Disease Control says they need it. 